Um, I decided to take a look at um, how the PlayStation 5's GPU upgrade is likely to deploy in its uh, game boost mode. Uh, essentially, what we could surmise from this is that the 45% extra of GPU power uh, will actually be used in backwards compatibility for games that don't provide PlayStation 5 Pro uh, official upgrade, so to speak. The only game that really interested me to any degree that I could actually do something on in a short period of time was Elden Ring. Okay, so head-to-head -head performance time. RX 6800s, pretty much 45% faster than baseline PlayStation 5 performance. Um, it's got 60 compute units like the Pro, similar sort of clock speeds, I suspect. Um, and we're going to be using the quality mode on PlayStation 5 here, uh, which I think it, it locks settings and it definitely locks resolution to 3840 by 2160, 4K, right? Um, now, the frame rate mode on PlayStation 5 has much the same settings, but it does have dynamic resolution scaling, and it can also seemingly scale quality settings as well, according to load. So quality mode is going to make for a much better, uh, closer comparison to the RX 6800 because, well, um, we don't have DRS or settings adjustment uh, happening dynamically on PC. Um, closest PC quality equivalent settings, that's the label on the right there. And the reason that's there is that some of the settings on PlayStation 5 are like hybrids of medium or high. So in that scenario, we've gone with the higher setting. Um, yeah, so uh, with that, um, I've got to say what I can't do is remove the stutter from the PC version. You can see it in the cutscene here. And uh, there might be various other stutters throughout the clips here because I think it's still got shader compilation issues so far on from launch, which is pretty shocking. Uh, Elden Ring PC, still not a great port. Uh, anyway, now, generally, in a lot of the clips, I'm finding that the 6800 is like 30 to 35% faster than the PlayStation 5, but that's typically because of V-Sync. We're locking, we're capped effectively to 60 frames per second. It's a hard limit. Running it unlocked, if it were possible, uh, would actually show um, more of a differential. Um, th now, there are some rare cases where the 6800 is actually faster than the kind of 45% uplift that we expect. Uh, there's any number of reasons for that, of course, um, but I've got to stress here that I'm benchmarking an RX 6800 it's not the PlayStation 5 Pro, right? And without access to the actual PlayStation 5 Pro hardware, we can only project performance based on general ballpark specs. So it's uh, it's just a bit of fun, right? <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, even then, even uh, with a potentially higher differential, the 6800 doesn't lock to 60 frames per second. Uh, so in the confrontation with the Dragon here, for example, with a bunch of fire and water effects in play, uh, frame rates are dropping into the 50s. It's not seen on the capture here, but I've seen it go low into the 40s even. Um, now, the PlayStation 5 itself can actually go down into the high 30s. Um, so when we actually get hands-on with PS5 Pro, uh, we'll be able to use this quality mode with its locked resolution and uh, locked settings um, to get an idea of the real performance increase up against uh, the base standard PlayStation 5, right? Um, would it be locked 60 in quality mode? It would be great if it does, but perhaps not. Um, the frame rate mode, though, that's still going to be there. You're still going to be able to access it on um, PlayStation 5 Pro. And just the introduction of dynamic resolution scaling there should make a difference. It should get you to 60. Uh, so assuming Game Boost does actually deploy the full power of the PS5 Pro's bigger GPU, hopefully there'll be some good news there. Um, Elden Ring might actually run locked at 60 frames per second for the first time on a console, God be praised. Um, but um, this does all kind of assume that we won't be CPU limited, of course. I had to use my test PC here with the RX 6800, not uh, the Frankenstein's PC with the Series X CPU, uh, because that had real issues. But I think that's mostly down to the quality of the PC port. Yeah, so yeah, I'm going to have to put together a list of games where we should expect to see some improvement, even without patches, uh, which we can put through our, uh, their paces on uh, PlayStation 5 Pro. Because I think ultimately this machine is aimed at people that have already got a PlayStation 5 who want more, more 
I think that's pretty much a given. I don't think it's aimed at new owners as such, but um, I think this could be a nice little bonus in addition to the patches we're going to be getting. They're saying we're going to get like 40 or 50 games at launch for the Pro, which is pretty amazing. But, you know, there are going to be outliers and um, there are going to be games that just get left behind. And I'm curious to see whether things improve there. Uh, games with FSR 2 with dynamic resolution, they should improve significantly, one would hope. Um, because essentially the more pixels FSR 2 has, the better the output you know, almost exponentially so, so as you add more pixels, that should be good. But yeah, this was just an interesting little test, entirely unconclusive at this point, I'd say. But, you know, what can I say? I think it's going to be an interesting feature.